Hey guys, let's go over this exam problem. So this was the, I think the second problem maybe that y'all had. And it says that we want to determine the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant force. And then we're going to sketch that resultant force and we'll label the coordinate direction angles on that sketch. Now we've got two forces, right? I've got F2 here and then I've got F1 right there. So what we're going to do is find the resultant. Now, first of all, let's remember what a resultant is. It is the sum of all of the force vectors. Okay, right now I've just got these magnitudes. So I need to get an actual force vector for each one of those. So let's go ahead and start with F1. So this one right here. And we'll get it in vector form and then we'll do the same for F2. All right, now if you notice, we've got different kinds of angles. So for F2, I've got angles between the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Those angles go directly to my force. Over here on F1, I don't have that. I've got this angle 60 degrees right here that goes from z to the force, but I don't have an angle that relates my force to the x or the y-axis. Okay, instead, what I've got is this 20 degree angle that relates this little diagonal line right here to the x-axis. Okay, so this is going to be one of those transverse azimuth angle type situations. All right, so let's go over how to figure this F1 vector out. All right, so let's write F1. And what we're going to do first in these types of situations is I want to drop my force down onto this diagonal line here, this green line. All right, we're going to drop it down because we're above the xy plane here. All right, so basically I want to break this force here into uh, this component. All right, so if you think about it, we could draw this line right here, and then that would be opposite 60. Okay, so I'm going to do 400 sine 60. And that's what we get for this component right here. All right, so now that we've got that, then we're going to work this just like a regular 2D problem, essentially. All right, so if we kind of draw our little 2D system, now this 400 sine 60 is going to be like our regular force magnitude that we deal with in a 2D system. And now we got 20 degrees, right? And that's x, and that's the negative y axis. So now when I find my x component, I want this piece right here, that component. So we're going to do 400 sine 60 cosine 20. That's pointing in the positive x direction. So it's going to be positive. So let's write 400 sine 60 cosine 20 i. And then we do the same thing for the y component. Now the y component's gonna be over here, all right? So this is gonna be opposite that angle because remember we could shift this over to here and make that little vector triangle. So this one will be 400 sine 60, sine 20. And remember this is the negative y-axis, so this will be negative. All right, so sine 60 and then sine 20 and then put J. Okay, so now that we have those two done, we're through with this 20 degree angle. Now we're gonna go back to our 60 degree angle. Okay, because our 60 degree angle related our force to the Z axis. Now if we look, our Z component is gonna be right here. And this is adjacent to that 60 degree angle. And notice it's pointing up, so it's going to be a positive. So we're going to have plus 400 cosine 60. And then that'll be K. All right, so that's kind of how you break that down and get your three components. And then we can simplify that. And if we do that, we get 325.52i minus 118. 0.479j plus 200k. And that's going to be in newtons. Okay, so that's how we do that one. 
And then now we're going to do F2. Now F2 is going to be easy because if you notice, the angles that we have here are our coordinate direction angles. Okay, so the 60 degrees is going from positive X to the force. So that means the 60 degrees is alpha. This 60 degree angle is going from positive Y to the force. So that's beta. And then finally, the 135 is going all the way from positive Z down to the force. So that's gamma. And notice since gamma is greater than 90, that means this force is going below that XY plane. So it's in that negative X direction. All right, so now what we need to do is take our 500 and then just multiply by the cosine of each of these angles for each component. So we'll have 500 cosine 60 I plus 500 cosine 60 J, right, because this was alpha, that's beta. And then we're going to have a plus 500 cosine 135 K that's gamma. And notice I put a plus sign here, right? We put a plus sign here because even though that force is in that negative z direction, this cosine 135 gives you a negative number. All right. So we wouldn't want to put, let me write that out better. So we wouldn't want to put a negative here because if I had a negative here and then I get a negative here, it gives me a positive, right? So Every time you use alpha, beta, or gamma, you just always put the positive sign out front. Okay, now let's simplify that. So we get 250i plus 250j, and then minus 353.55k, and that's going to be newtons. All right, so now we have our two forces. Now I can find my resultant force. Okay, because remember what we were looking for, I wanted R, the magnitude of R, and then I want the alpha, beta, and gamma angles for that resultant vector. So R is going to be F1 plus F2. So essentially we're gonna take these vectors and then add up the components. Okay, so remember, we're going to add the I components together. So let's do that. So we'll have 325.52 plus 250. That's our I component for the resultant. We do the same thing for the J components. So I have plus negative 118.479 plus 250. That's J. And then finally the K components, which I'll put down here. So 200 minus 353.55K. And then that simplifies to 575.52I plus 131.52J minus 153.55K. And that's Newton's. So now we have our resultant vector and we want to find the magnitude. So how do we find the magnitude? Well, we do the square root of the sum of the squares. So we're gonna have the square root of 575.52 squared plus 131.52 squared plus negative 153.55 squared. And that magnitude is then approximately 610 newtons. Okay, so that gives us our magnitude of the resultant force. And then last thing we need to do will be to find these three angles right here, alpha, beta, gamma, and then we'll do a sketch. Now remember, finding alpha, beta, gamma is pretty easy. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, for the alpha component at least, you're going to take the x component of your vector, so that's our 575.52, and you're going to divide it by the magnitude. All right, so let's divide that. Then we would do the arc cosine of whatever value this right here is in the parentheses, and that gives us alpha, which is 19.36 degrees. 
Now beta relates the y-axis to our vector, so we're going to use the y component of the resultant on this one and put it over the magnitude, which is 610. So then calculate this value here, do the arc cosine, and we get that beta is 77.55 degrees. And last one, cosine gamma. Gamma deals with the z-axis, so we're going to do negative 153.55, put it over 610, do that arc cosine, and we get 104.58 degrees. All right, so now we've got our angles here, and then next thing we want to do is draw that resultant vector. So let's do that. So first, let's look at the resultant vector. I've got a positive x, a positive y, and a negative z. All right, so keep that in mind as we go through here and draw that out. So that's x, that's y, that's z. So remember, positive x, positive y, negative z. So that means our resultant is going to be down below this x, y plane. All right, and that's because we're positive x, which is this direction, positive y, which is that direction that puts us on this plane here, and we're negative z, so we're below it. Okay. So let's put the resultant, and then we want to label our angles. Okay, so alpha is the angle between the positive x-axis and the resultant. So it'll be alpha. Beta is going to be from the positive y-axis to the resultant, and then gamma goes all the way from positive z to the resultant. All right, so now you've got that. And if you notice, these angles, they make sense with the values we have in the resultant. Notice I'm only 19 degrees for alpha, and notice how much larger my x component is in the resultant. So we have a much larger x component, which is why our angle here is smaller. We're closer to that x-axis, okay? Which indicates the resultant's acting uh, more in the x direction than the other two directions. All right, so hopefully that one makes sense, and I will see you guys next time. Y'all have a great night.